Hey, g'day guys. Um, welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody is getting some clearer skies than I am at the moment. Um, first things first, I promise you that I won't do any videos or information on the Star Adventurer GTI and its new go-to functionality because <laughs> I think we might have all seen enough of that by now. But what I will do is we'll have a look at this today, which is the Antlia, what do they call this? This is the Antlia Golden Duo Narrowband Filter. Um, I believe it's been out since late, very late last year, I think. Um, and it's one of those filters I've been personally umming and ahhing on, whether I really want to spend the money on this. So just to say up front, there's no affiliate links on my channel. I've purchased this with my own money. Um, it's 600 Australian dollars, so it's definitely the most expensive duo narrowband filter that I've purchased for my system, which is why, you know, it did take me a while before I've actually pulled the trigger on this one, especially since I have, whoops, I have the L Extreme and the L Enhance filter as well. Um, predominantly, I've been using the L Extreme filter. Sometimes if I've got two rigs, I'll use the L Enhance as well. Um, now, as some of you may know, the L-Extreme is a seven nanometer bandpass filter for, for the hydrogen and the oxygen. Um, the Antlia brings it down to five nanometers. So it's, you know, it's obviously an increase of two, but that's not the main reason that I've purchased it. In fact, if that was, you know, the only reason, I don't know if I'd have pulled the trigger on it. Um, but I, I have heard from people that the Antlia Golden filter actually reduces the halos that you get on those big stars. So f for anybody like me that's taken images of the Horsehead Nebula or any nebula that's got a big star in it, you've probably had this issue. And I'll bring this closer to the camera so you can sort of see it. Hopefully it focuses on it. And this is Alnitak and you can see the haloing that I've got there on that star. I'll show you on the computer in a minute. but. You know, in some, in some respects, that's not a big issue. But the problem for me is that, especially when you've printed an image out like this, is it kind of like detracts a little bit from how great the nebulosity looks. So I'm really happy with that image in general in terms of, you know, the detail that I've managed to get in the nebulosity. But I also find, and maybe it's the OCD side of me, that I get pulled into that star. <laughs> and it sort of irritates me. So that's why I went ahead and I decided I wanna give this filter, um, I wanna give this filter a go and see if, see if that, um, that evidence and those stories about this actually improving that haloing are actually true. Um, now I'm not expecting it to reduce the halo, um, I'm not expecting it to eliminate that's, those halos altogether but I am hoping for it to at least reduce them and fairly substantially. Let's just have a look on the computer at some of the images that I took here. So this is a single exposure, 10 minute exposure with the L Extreme filter at 390 millimeters. Um, and you can see clearly what's happening here. So you can see the halo that's happening here on a single exposure. Um, so if we actually then look at the stacked image, you know, pretty clear again to see. Um, and you can also see it up here on this star as well. You can see that happening around there. Not as, it's not as dominant as course, but you can see it. And like I say, an image like this where I'm really happy with the detail that I've managed to get here on the horse's head and through here, it's a little bit irritating. <laughs> I guess, you know, it depends to what degree these things bother you, like, like everything with astrophotography really. Um, because at the same time, I predominantly, I only image in one shot colour. So I'm sure for some people that would annoy them and they want to get that much more detail in mono. Um, and if we look at the, the stars that have been separated out from the image, obviously again, we can see it really, really clearly. So 
you know, that's my big hope for this filter, that it's going to reduce those halos for me. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my scope tonight, the exact same scope. I'm going to drop in, I mean, we know how this is going to perform anyway, but I'm going to, just going to drop in the L Extreme filter. We'll take two or three images, probably around five minutes or something. And we'll then drop in the Antlia Golden and we will do the same test. I might even take, I'll probably even take a 10 minute image just to see how it compares to that old 10 minute image and to see, um, you know, how the two compare directly from those, from those old um, sub-exposures. So that's my plan. That's my plan for this evening. We just got to wait for it to get dark and then we will, we'll set our rig up. We'll head outside. We've still got Orion. It's pretty low now. It's getting pretty low, but I've still got enough of Orion that I can actually do this test. So I'll, I'll have to work pretty quickly. But um, yeah, it's just to do the, the first test and see if we really do get that um, change in those halos. So I hope you'll stick around and we will see if the Antlia wins the gold medal. Yeah, it's not very good, but it's all I could come up with. All right, we'll catch you a bit later outside. All right, guys, so it is time now. It's about seven o'clock, so it's dark enough that we can actually get started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the um, Antlia Golden filter in and we'll slew and take our first shot and see, see what comes of it. All right, guys, so I'm going to get into this now. I'm going to take these exposures and I'll come back when I've finished taking the exposures. I'll switch the filters once I've done one or two exposures with this one. I'll switch the filters, take another couple of exposures with the extreme just to make sure we've got a like for like and we'll come back and have a look at the results. So I'll see you shortly. OK, guys, so we have finished our first shots with the two filters. I took two shots with um, I took two shots with each filter and let's have a look at them so we got a five minute and a ten minute so we got um, let's have a look first at the five minute with the L Extreme filter so you know not really much of a surprise we can still see obviously the halo that we were getting before as we expected I'll just zoom that in so you can see it quite clearly and then we will have a look at our five minute Antlia filter. Okay, so if we can, we'll get them side by side as well. Okay, so we got the L Extreme on the right and the Antlia on the left. So you can also see the red, I mean, I guess it's the difference with the, um, the five nanometer band pass, but for me, the horse's head is a bit clearer as well, but more defined and that red's coming through stronger. Um, and obviously the main thing we'll wanna look at is this star here. And for me, that looks much better. That's a, um, that's a big improvement to the one on the right there where you've got that really clearly defined, you know, sort of halo circle that's going around it. So certainly for that five minute exposure, we are looking a lot better with the Antlia filter. Okay, so let's move on to our 10 minute exposures. Okay, so we've got the, um, 10 minute L Extreme over here. And let's get the 10 minute Antlia as well. And these are literally, we're talking like 10, 15 minutes apart these. So, you know, the angle that they were at has, has barely changed in the sky. So it's not like any of that's gonna be a factor here. And as you can see, a pretty nice, 
pretty nice result again I was wondering pushing the time up if we would see much of a difference by doubling the time but again um, you know for me obviously again that that reds that reds coming through more across the whole across the whole image it's sort of a more of an orangey red actually but um, obviously the main thing again here is this star and again you know we've really managed to get rid of that really big halo in that we had on the LX stream so look you know for me it's a win-win I've got that slightly tighter band pass now um, you know which is always going to be better when you're imaging from your back backyard like I am um, and on top of that I am reducing the halos that I have around those big stars so you know overall for me I'm I'm pretty happy with that that's that's kind of what I was expecting and um, it looks like those it looks like those reports online and um, you know what the actual retailer told me because they told me that they tested it themselves and they'd seen significant um, a significant difference and a significant reduction um, it looks like that's that's all true so there you go that's the Antlia Golden and um, I hope that's been some help for you guys if you're considering maybe moving you know from an LX stream filter like I did um, to the to the Golden um, I'm going to be keeping um, the LX stream filter anyway because I've got more than one rig and it's still a good filter um, but you know for targets where I can and I've got those big stars I'll certainly be trying to use this golden filter now so I um, hope that was some use to you guys thanks as always for watching and um, if you feel like it a like and a subscribe is always welcome so um, cheers everyone and I'll, I'll catch you on the next video I've got to do this first. Yeah, it makes the makes the filters seem cooler if they go in and out of focus. Yeah, so you kind of just start off with them like this, and then you know they focus, and then whew. yeah, I know it's it is hard to make a box and a piece of glass look. That's how you do it. Whew.